I getting better at this? Really? Made me not like you. No way. Is that why you didn't respond? This video is sponsored by Klima, but more on them later. Turn off your alarm clock. We won't need it in the morning. We won't wake up. Just hold off all your problems. We don't oh, there, my beautiful, beautiful friends. I hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. As for always, you deserve it. Welcome back to my channel. I am so grateful that you are here. <laughs> This week is gonna be a little bit different than my other videos because we are doing a zero waste what I eat in a week video. But for that reason, I thought it would be a great idea to do a full grocery haul for you guys. So why don't we go and do that? Well, actually beforehand, let me just say this. I am not a zero waste expert whatsoever. However, the environment is something that I put a lot of thought into when it comes to my purchases and how I live my life. For example, I thrift all of my clothing so I don't buy anything new. And I am also a vegan, well, Technically, I'm a plant-based person because I do enjoy eggs and or honey very occasionally. And the reason I want to tell you guys this is because one day I want my own chickens and I don't want you guys to be like, what the heck? You were vegan all along. You are never vegan. You're a traitor. I don't want that to happen, so that's why I'm saying this from the get-go, that I love eggs, but I don't like the industry level of them, so that's why I don't support it. But one day, when I have my own chickens, I won't have to worry about that. But yeah. I just wanna take the backlash away from my future, so keep that in mind. Thanks, guys. So, with that said, I just wanna be open and honest with you guys. The fact that I am not perfect, and I am not perfect in the eyes of society, but all of the recipes that I do share on this channel are vegan because that is how I eat 99.999999% of the time. Don't get caught up in trying to be perfect because at the end of the day, it is nearly impossible. And what's really gonna make a difference is a bunch of people making small changes on a global level and basically showing certain industries that you don't wanna support certain things. With that all said, I hope this video somewhat inspires you to maybe do something a little bit different or just get creative in the kitchen. And without further ado, Let's blow this popsicle stand. So I thought while we're on the roll of talking, I'd just take a second to introduce today's sponsor. They were the true inspiration behind today's video and a reminder that my personal choices do make a difference and they do matter. So thank you Klima for reminding me of that and sponsoring today's video. Klima is an app that is helping to face the biggest fight of our generation, which is climate change. Climate change is something that is affecting all of us more than we dare to admit and taking personal action does make a difference and that's where Klima comes in to help. Once you download the app, they will give you a series of questions that only take a few minutes to answer, such as how much you drive, how you shop, your diet, and all of these questions Questions are going to help them calculate your carbon footprint. From there, you can choose what projects you'd like to be involved in to become carbon neutral. They give you an option to plant trees, build solar power, and provide clean cook stoves. Or you can choose to support all of them, which is what I do. They also show you your annual footprint against the average person and your offsets every single month and for the year as well. So that way you can see your impact right on your phone. Klima provides you so many great resources and articles so that way you can learn more about how you can further your impact and create change. They answer all of your questions about what they do, where your money is going, and so much more. I also think it's pretty awesome that I can invite my friends, loved ones, and all of you guys to create create change with me. So if you'd like to become carbon neutral, click the link down in my description box below and use my code to get 10 extra trees planted in your name. 10 extra trees planted in your name. This also really supports my channel, so help the planet and help me continue making great content for you all. I hope that together we can create a nicer and greener planet for many, many years to come. So an extra thank you to Klima for sponsoring today's video. And if you haven't been able to tell, like a smart little booger that I know that you are, we are back from the grocery store. We got all of our goods laid out on our table and we are ready to go. And I don't wanna do this for too long because I really wanna eat lunch. So let's dive into it. At the bulk food store, I got some red lentils, some dates, some protein powder. This is literally just peas, like ground up peas, but it's super high in protein, so protein powder. We got some brown rice pasta, which is my favorite. I also got some smoked paprika because I ran out 
a green cabbage, a red cabbage, which weirdly has this thing in it for whatever reason. I don't know why. So sadly, we have one piece of plastic so far. Got a couple heads of romaine lettuce, a orange pepper. I have a red pepper still in the fridge. I also still have some stuff in the fridge. And one of the best ways that you can be sustainable is just by using up what you have instead of letting it go to waste and then buying more stuff. Use up what you have in the house and get creative in the kitchen to eliminate your food waste. Food waste is such a big factor. Got a couple heads of garlic. I love garlic. Some onion, uh, some ginger, some red onion. We got a cute little chubby squash, which is just so adorable. Sweet potatoes. We got some little guys today. And some, I think these are russet potatoes. I think, no, I think they're big yellow potatoes actually. Anyways, potatoes. A rutabaga, no, radicchio. We got some radicchio. <laughs> I have cooked this once before and honestly didn't like it. However, that was many years ago. So I thought I'd give it another shot, you know? I got some bok choy because I love making Asian dishes with pak, pak choy. <laughs> we got a bunch of mushrooms as well. Some radishes, la, la, lemons. Don't that, don't fall, don't. Oh, ah, no! <laughs> I told that one not to fall, but I didn't tell this one not to fall. Sorry, little guy. I got some limes and some apples as well. So all in all, I spent at the bulk food store just over $16. It was like 16 some odd cents. And then at the grocery store, I spent $71. Mind you, a lot of this is organic produce because at the grocery store that I went to just so happens to be an organic store but I know that they don't put a lot of their stuff in packaging so that's why I went there today I don't always shop organic and I don't always shop at that grocery store so just keep that in mind that this week I am putting in a little bit extra effort in being zero waste and I'm not just live in my daily life basically but the reason that I wanted to do this as well was to challenge myself because I know I can do better a lot of the time and a lot of the time I'm not doing it out of convenience which is not fair to me, the planet, and my future children's 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 children. And I want to be better. So this is me trying to be better. <laughs> Anyways, I really want to make some lunch, so let's get to it. And here comes voiceover Julia. What is up, guys? To start off today's lunch, I got some brown rice going over the stove, and then I peeled, chopped, diced, sliced, some carrot and some parsnip. After that, I got some oil into a hot pan, threw in my carrot and my parsnip, gave it a nice good toss so that everything was coated in oil, covered it with a lid for a couple minutes, salted it, peppered it, chili flaked it, and then I added some cinnamon to this because I was feeling some warming spices. It's winter time where I am living right now and warming spices are just sent from the heavens. We are going to turn this into a big Buddha bowl. So with a big Buddha bowl, we need a nice dressing. So I'm making a tahini dressing, just a super simple one with some lemon juice, water, garlic powder, and maple syrup. So I totally forgot to mention that when I went out to the grocery store, I completely forgot my jars for the bulk food store. So I ran back home and when I stopped at home, I had a date square. Well, no, that's a lie. I had two date squares <laughs> to hold myself over until a lunch. Speaking of which, it's ready. So I threw my brown rice in the bowl first, threw some greens in there that I had hanging out in the fridge, topped it off with my carrot and my parsnip, and then drizzled my dressing on top. So honestly, I was a little bit lazy cooking today, so I decided to throw together a nice little smoothie with some frozen bananas, some hemp seeds, some protein powder that I just got, some ashwagandha, and some water as well. And then, of course, I had to, I had to throw some peanut butter in there too. What am I, an expert at smoothie making for once in my life instead of spilling it everywhere? Mmm. Shortly after I finished that smoothie, I decided to just warm up some leftover pasta along with some leftover lentil meatballs that I made in last week's What I Eat in a Day video. This recipe, recipe will be linked down below for you guys. It's very delicious. <laughs> I started off today by making myself a coffee because, mmm, coffee? <laughs> I then munched on a couple of these chocolate fudgy cashew things that I made in my dessert video. So good, guys. 
But after our coffee and our dessert to start the day, I decided it would be a good idea to actually make myself some substance. So I started by chopping up some mushrooms and some red onion and some garlic and then threw that into a hot pan with some oil. I then moved over to making myself a nice dressing to top this breakfast Buddha bowl that I am making. And I decided to just add on top of the leftover tahini dressing that I made yesterday. So I simply just added some more tahini, added some more lemon juice, some salt, some pepper, pepper, some onion powder, and a touch more maple syrup as well. I then threw some leftover brown rice and kidney beans in my pan to warm up after my mushrooms had finished. And then moving back over to our bowl, we threw some greens in there. We got some romaine lettuce that we just got, along with some leftover mixed greens that I had from last week threw some parsley in there and then threw everything that I had in the frying pan on top of all of that along with some chopped up cucumbers and some chopped up raspberry raspberry radish <laughs> some radish threw my sauce on top and this was my super damn delicious but very nourishing breakfast bowl after that, I had a little bit of a sweet tooth, so I went over to my friend, the mango. I love mango. These mangoes weren't the best that I bought, to be 100% honest. They weren't as juicy and ripe as I wanted them to be. I also had a couple date squares along with my mango and then decided to soak some beans. Out of convenience, I always just buy canned beans because it's convenient and I don't have to worry about soaking my beans. But you know, honestly, it's really not that hard to put some beans into a bowl and then add some water and set it aside. It's really not that hard, you know? And a little bit later, I was still dreaming about a smoothie for some reason. I just had a craving, even though it's winter time and I, it's cold. Ah! That was a close call. Just another super simple one today with frozen banana, kale, protein powder, maca powder, some cashew butter, some maple syrup, some hemp seeds. And I thought, eh, what the heck? I'll throw some spirulina in here. Ah. I literally forgot water. Why am I getting better at this? It's like I got a kettle and then I just stopped spilling things. Oh, well that doesn't make for a funny video. <laughs> I feel like you guys know by now that I really love my stir fries. I really, really love my stir fries. So I chopped up half of an onion, half a carrot, and chopped off the butt ends of that bok choy. And then I needed a nice sauce, but I wanted to make leftovers as well. So I added half of a cup of tamari, a couple tablespoons worth of maple syrup, a couple tablespoons worth of rice vinegar, half of a lime because I love acidity, and a whole tablespoon of sriracha. And I should have added the sriracha like first, <laughs> so I didn't have to do this. But <laughs> hey, you live in you learn right gave it a little shake taste tested it and I needed some more maple syrup so that went in there and then into my stir fry I threw some minced ginger and garlic let that saute for a couple more minutes threw my sauce in there threw the lid back on and let it sit to marinate and get all the good flavors going for a few more minutes I also had some quinoa going along with a couple sweet potatoes in the oven. Nothing fancy here, literally plain quinoa, literally a plain sweet potato. It was not too technical and I felt no need to actually show you guys what I did because I think you're smart enough to figure it out. Anyways, I threw my stir fry on top of those things and there we go, a delicious, nourishing dinner with a happy girl afterwards. So after avoiding it for a couple days, I decided it would be a good time to make myself some oat milk. I love oat milk. It's amazing. And homemade oat milk, so simple. Literally a cup of oats, four cups of water, a little bit of vanilla, and a little bit of maple syrup to your liking. And then I use a nut milk bag and I use a coffee... I can't remember the name of that thing. It's... Uh, mm. Since I can't remember the name of it, it's just like this thing that you make coffee in and you put a filter over it and you pour like a pour over coffee thingy. Anyways, I just set that on top of a jar and pour my mixture through it through a nut milk bag and then that is how I make my oat milk. I put it into a big sealable container and throw that into the fridge and then it was time to have some coffee because to be honest, oat milk and coffee is like my favorite thing. It's not absolutely my favorite thing, but it's like one of my favorite things. My absolute favorite thing is a mocha and that's what we're having here. 
So in with this mocha, I got some maca powder as well. And I gotta say, it was a nice morning. Another big old Buddha bowl for breakfast this morning, along with some more tahini dressing. I just added some more tahini, lemon juice, onion powder, some paprika, along with some dill as well, and then some water to thin it out. And like I did the other day, I just added this on top of the tahini dressing that I already had made. I threw some greens in my bowl, along with some leftover quinoa, leftover sweet potato, and some leftover lentil meatballs, some sauerkraut because I love fermented foods, and some pickled red onion because why not? They're so beautiful and delicious. Topped it off with some parsley and... Ah, so pretty! So a little while after my breakfast, I stopped to have a green tea and a cookie and a little relaxation time and then got to my beans, the beans that I was soaking overnight. I threw my lentils into my pot along with some salt, some pepper, and then some chilies and some scraps that I just had hanging out from making food over the last couple days. And I'm basically doing the exact same thing with these soybeans as well. They're into the pan along with some water, some salt, some pepper, some chilies. I threw some parsley in here as well for some nice freshness along with some lemon. And that was it. I let the lentils go a little bit too long, not gonna lie. They were a little bit too soggy. They were completely falling apart after because I just kind of forgot about them, not gonna lie. However, the soybeans did need a lot of time. So they were hanging out for probably about four hours on low on the stove. With our lentils, we're going to make a curry. So I chopped up some parsnips, some red cabbage, and some ginger, threw that into my pan along with some oil, some salt, some pepper, some kale, threw my very sad, mushy lentils in along with some Egyptian curry spice. This Egyptian curry spice is literally sent from the heavens and it's my favorite thing ever. But if you wanna make this dish at home, it is so, so simple, but just use your favorite curry spice. You don't have to go out and find my favorite curry spice. Just use what you got in the house and have some fun. Play around with it. Maybe add some carrot. Maybe don't add carrot. I don't know. I saw you walking in the street for dinner tonight, Mitch came over and we were having tacos. So I threw some very finely chopped onion and garlic into my pan on low heat with some oil. And then now we're making a slaw with some red cabbage. So I sliced my red cabbage up, threw some lime juice on there along with some salt, gave it a nice massage, and then threw some kale in there too. The last little remnants of my kale that I had in the house, gave it a nice massage. And then to my onions and my garlic, I added some cumin, some paprika, some chili flakes, sorry, smoked paprika, let me correct myself there. I added my soybeans, gave that a good mix, along with a little bit of the water that they were stewing in as well with some vegan butter, and then covered that with a lid for about five minutes or so. Oh, I do not like that mayo. Is it back in the fridge? What am I gonna do with it right now? Oh, you Nothing. think I'll still use it? I mean, I'll figure out some way to use it. I gotta like zest this up, make it better. Oh no, this is not good. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make it okay. I've done that where you put something in wrong and you try to fix it and you just end up with this like super saucy fucking... No. That's no. not it. It's gonna work. I hope it does, baby. Trust me. Okay. That helped a lot. You're not having four like me, you're gonna make me feel fat. You are like seven. huge, seven feet tall. That's what I feel like. No, I'm actually like I was ten. gonna say like seventy pounds heavier than me. I should gain like twenty pounds. Get huge, like where I can't look no, left and right. I don't. Like I have to move my whole body I was because like, my neck is so big. That was a joke that you said to me on Hinge that I really? made me not like you. No way. Is that why you didn't respond? <laughs> yeah. Well, look at us now. So I just recycle jokes for years. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ding. Mmm. <laughs> oh, it's really good. I find the meat. Cheers, eh? So I truly do have a love for matcha. I gotta say, I I love matcha, but for whatever reason, it's like one extra step 
then to make coffee, so I just decide to make coffee and I don't know why I do that to myself. Matcha is just so much better for me. I feel so much better after I drink it. Anyways, we are making another smoothie. Frozen bananas, some sad little blueberries that I found in the back of my fridge, some frozen spinach, some protein powder, some maca powder, some cashew butter, some oat milk, and some water as well. Blended that all up into this nice, beautiful green color emerged out of all of the ingredients. <laughs> and then I decided to munch on some leftover sweets from my super yummy gluten-free vegan dessert video that I just put up. I had a Twix bar and a date square, and then I needed some savory in my life. So I threw some rummy lettuce, some red cabbage, some leftover quinoa, some red cabbage sauerkraut, along with some radish, and then a delicious dressing. I actually lost the footage of me making this dressing for you guys, but it was a super simple one. Just lemon juice, spices, and some vegan mayo. Along with that salad, I also had some leftover roasted red pepper soup, and then I headed over to Mitch's house to make some dinner. Sliced up some mushrooms and some red pepper, threw the mushrooms into my frying pan until they got nice and browned, threw my red pepper in there, some sage, some zucchini. And by the way, we're making pasta today. We're making a lemon tahini delicious pasta. So I got some tahini in my jar along with some white balsamic vinegar, some lemon juice, threw my pasta in my water. And then once they were finished, I threw my veggies in there along with my pasta and my dressing as well. And of course I had to add some red chili flakes to this because you guys know me, I love to spice things up. A lovely follower on my Instagram sent me a post that was like, people that eat spicy food live longer. And I thought, it was the funniest thing ever and I loved it. So shout out to her. Ah, oh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but shout out to you. You know who you are. And if you're not following me on Instagram, come on guys, get on it. It's at Flavorful Julia. All right, we're on a little matcha kick over the last couple days. I'm vibing it. I'm feeling it. We're happy about it. So we're still at Mitch's, by the way, as you can tell. And he had some delicious bread left over. So I had a slice of that, toasted it up in the toaster, added some of this avocado hummus stuff that he can't eat because... He's allergic to chickpeas, but he bought it for his New Year's Eve party. Anyways, I added all of the fixins. Hash browns. Chipotle ketchup. Once we got home later in the day, I wanted a nice warm Caesar salad. Yes, a warm Caesar salad. I know it may sound weird, but trust me, it is very, very delicious. I threw some romaine lettuce into a frying pan with some oil. If you have a grill, use a grill. It is so much better, but at the end of the day, I don't have one, so I gotta use my frying pan. I also threw half of that radicchio into the pan with my romaine lettuce and then topped this all off with the leftover soybeans, some cucumbers, some capers. I think we all have a spot in our fridge that freezes things. Very annoying. <laughs> Top this plate off with some pickled red onions because guys, you gotta have them. You gotta try, they're so good. I also threw some red cabbage sauerkraut on there along with my dressing that's made with vegan mayo, some spices and some maple syrup and lemon juice as well. A super simple one and it's actually the one that I had the other day on that salad too. For dinner today, we are killing it with simplicity and flavor, which is my favorite way to make dinner. So all I did was dice up this butternut squash, threw it into my pot, along with some salt, some oil, and some water, threw the lid on top, and then chucked it into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or so, munched on one of those cookies, and as soon as that squash was in the oven, I got cooking my brown rice, and I did not rinse it, and I did not do anything to it. All I did was put dry brown rice into my into my pot, and yes, that's embarrassing, but hey, you know what? I didn't have time to soak. I had time. I just didn't. I just didn't. I was lazy. Okay, anyways, before the squash was completely done, I threw in some minced garlic and ginger, along with a little bit of that sauce that we made the other night. Threw that back into the oven without the lid for about 10 more minutes. I pulled it back out, threw some more marinade on top of that, mixed Mixed it all up, threw it into my bowl along with my brown rice, some radish just for a nice pop of color, and some black sesame seeds. This was so good. All right, day three of matcha. Is there a trend going on here? I really hope so. I hope we keep it up. While we were sipping on our matcha, I decided to chop up or dice up, cut up the other mango. <laughs> Snacked on that, hung out for a little bit, and then decided to tackle the old sad cranberries that have been in my fridge since Christmas. Yes, Christmas. Sad. 
So I threw that into the pot along with some water, some sugar, a diced and peeled apple, and a little bit of lemon juice as well. And once they were all bursted and it was nice and hot, I threw that into my blender and blended it until it was like somewhat smooth. And there we go, some cranberry jam. And here we are back to my ride or die, the savory breakfast bowl. Into my hot pan, I added my oil and my potatoes and sauteed them until they were nice and crispy and delicious with some salt and some pepper. So very simple. I chopped up some romaine lettuce, threw them in, threw them, threw that into my bowl and made some more of this mayo dressing. I decided I really need to use up this mayo because I don't love it. So I gotta constantly spice it up. Again, super simple, salt, pepper, chili flakes, lemon juice, and a little bit of onion powder as well. Nothing fancy. I tossed my romaine lettuce into it, topped it with my potatoes, some pickled red onions, some red cabbage, sauerkraut, and that's it, man. It was so simple, yet so flavorful. But after that nice savory breakfast, I needed a little sweetness in my life, so I had one of those Twix bars, and then I decided to tackle the compost slash the compost that I thought would be good as a broth. So I had this all sitting into a bowl, sitting into a bowl, sitting in a bowl in my freezer, threw that into my pot along with a bunch of water. And then I just set it on the stove for like four hours. Although I did save the liquid of my beans and also threw that in there too to add some extra flavor. I honestly wasn't too hungry for lunch today for whatever damn reason. So I decided to just make a super simple little protein shake drink thing. Just a little protein powder, a little maple syrup, a little oat milk, a little vanilla, and some maca powder. Okay guys, I almost cannot contain the excitement that I have for this dinner. I am making pierogies. Have I ever made pierogies before this moment? No. Did I have any idea what I was doing? No. Did it work out? Yes. Yes, it did. How? I'm unsure. But you know what? I just took the logic behind gnocchi and applied it to this dough. So as you saw, I boiled a potato until it was very soft, mashed it up with some salt and a little bit of vegan butter. And then I just slowly worked in some whole wheat flour until it was the right consistency that I thought I could roll it out and make little pierogi rounds that I'm doing here. So I just used a cup and pressed it into the dough. And in hindsight, I should have used a slightly bigger cup because these rounds weren't quite big enough. I did have to roll roll them out a little bit more to be able to like stuff them and and whatnot without them being so thick with no filling inside <laughs> however I filled these guys up with sauerkraut and the sauerkraut uh, sauerkraut pierogies are literally my favorite thing of life if you have not tried them you have to it's like you get the essence of the pierogi, but you also get this tanginess of the sauerkraut that kind of makes it feel a little bit more along the lines of a dumpling. And to me, it just works so, so well. I also just love fermented foods, so maybe that's the reason I love it so much, but I recommend it. I highly recommend it. So I heated up some olive oil in my pan and then threw some pierogies in there, and I honestly just kept making my pierogies as I was frying them. And, and as some of the pierogies were done in the pan, I added some more in there and just kept on rotating my pan and adding some more oil as I needed it. But look at these, so beautiful and golden brown. So let's just say this is not going as planned. I spilled that broth all over my floor, like literally a massive pool of broth. But hey, we cleaned her up, we got it on the stove, along with some bok choy, some tamari, and some miso to add some salt and some flavor to it. Okay guys, I'm actually shook right now to the fact that these worked, taste amazing, look amazing, didn't explode all over the place. Like, how did that happen? Seriously, how did that happen? I cannot believe that I just created this masterpiece. I am actually so proud of myself. Like I said, I could not contain my excitement. I feel like maybe Mitch's Ukrainian side is rubbing off on me a little bit and I'm getting the skills to make pierogies out of the blue. All in all, I made 24. So I wanted to show you guys the waste that I produced over the last like week or so. So I've got this bag that had cranberries in it. Um, obviously the cranberries were already in my fridge, so I just needed to use them up. And in doing that, I had a bag. I also had a small piece of cucumber left over in the fridge, so I used that up and that was the wrapper around that. When I went to the bulk food store, I dropped this on the ground and smashed the lid. So now that is gonna go into to the recycling bin because I have no more use for that. I had some leftover blueberries in the fridge that I wanted to eat as well. So 
in doing so, created that container. And this was around the bundle of kale that was already in my fridge as well. I used up some leftover sage that I had. This was in the butt end of that red cabbage that I bought this week, so that's that. I had a bunch of little stickers on all of the fruit and produce that I bought, and then I also found a small piece of tofu in the fridge that had gone bad, so once I put that into the compost, I had this container left over as well. So obviously this wasn't a perfect zero waste week for me. However, I avoided so many things going in the garbage, which is a massive win in my opinion. Along with the plastic stuff that I dish, dish showed you, I have a bunch of compost in my freezer as well. The next step for me to do is set up a composting system to come to my house every single week and or my apartment building, I should say. I have relied on other people to compost my stuff and Mitch actually has a composting system in his backyard. However, However, in the winter time, it doesn't really work because it just gets frozen and doesn't break down. Like I said at the beginning, being perfect is a hard task to achieve, but it's about trying your best and trying to be mindful of what you're consuming and what you're purchasing and how you're living your life. And for me, this has opened my eyes on so many aspects and I'm going to try even better to make sure that I am lessening my waste when it comes to my kitchen. I already do so much when it comes to how I live my life and I am a very minimal person or minimalist in so many senses, but moving that into my kitchen area and what I do for my job basically is going to be the next big step. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I want to thank you all so much for joining me this week. I hope it inspired you to create less waste. I'm sending you all so much love and hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. I will see you again so very soon for many more videos coming your way. Lots of love. Mwah.